product area equals the limit as n approaches infinity copy the summation notation from i equals 1 through n copy delta x my delta x is 2 over n and multiplied by f of xi exactly what I got in step 3 this in parentheses 4i squared over n squared plus 1 now the problem reduces to finding this limit finding the sum and then finding the limit apply to the sum and then we will have the exact area with no approximations whatsoever okay so we'll continue first of all remember we had a property a few minutes ago I, I'm sorry about an hour ago with a constant and we said a constant goes out here it is if the constant does not depend on n or the index then the constant goes in front so 2 over n has nothing to do with i i is the one that moves from 1 to n but this doesn't have i in it so it's a constant it will go in front of the summation notation so this is limit as n approaches infinity from 2 over n then what is left is the summation of two terms added together and that's another property here's the property the sum of two terms is the sum of the first term plus the sum of the second term I'm going to immediately write that so then I have the sum of 4i squared over n squared from i equals 1 through n plus the sum of 1 from i equals 1 through n this I know like uh, I don't know how long ago we wrote it and I wrote the answer before I finished it it's n so this piece is already known now I see another application of the same property with a constant here it is if there is a constant that has nothing to do with the index and it's multiplied not added of course multiplied I can put it in front and that's exactly what I'm going to do this is a piece that has nothing to do with i, it's a constant, multiplies i squared, it will be put in front of the summation notation. Limit as n approaches infinity, 2 over n, 4 over n squared, and what is left here? The summation of i squared, the ugly one. I know the formula, is that long one n, n plus 1 to n plus 1 over 6 the summation of i squared n, n plus 1 to n plus 1 over 6 so I got rid of the summation n, n plus 1 to n plus 1 over 6 that is the sum of i squared plus n so let's regroup for a second before we continue in order to determine the exact area using the limit of the Riemann sum I have three preps first I have to determine the width of each subinterval then I have to determine xi and then plug it in the function so that I can put these two together 2 over n and the function of xi then it's all algebra manipulating the summation notation this is a constant does not depend on i goes in front we put it in front and then we know that now we have the summation of two terms the sum of this plus the sum of one 
I know the sum of 1 from i equals 1 through n. I see that this is another factor that goes in front of the summation notation, and then the sum from i equals 1 through n of i squared is this quantity, and then plus n. At this point, again just algebra, I'm going to try and see if I can simplify anything, and I realize that I can simplify an n from here, with an n from here. I can also simplify by 2, 4 divided by 2 and 6 divided by 2. I'll keep 2 over n outside still. I realize that the least common denominator must be 3n. I need to multiply these two and then by 2. So I'll write 2 and multiply these two. 2n squared plus 2n plus n plus 1. Since the denominator is 3, the least common denominator is 3n, and this is over 1, the numerator has to be multiplied by 3n. Finally, plus 3n squared. Getting very close. Limit. As n approaches infinity, the denominator is 3n squared. The numerator is 2. Let's see what I can do here to simplify. 2 times 2 is 4n squared plus 3. 7n squared. 2n plus n is 3n times 2 plus 6n. And 2 times 1 is plus 2. I will distribute the 2, 14n squared plus 12n plus 4 divided by 3n squared. We already know the answer from pre-calc. Let's say we don't remember. Infinity over infinity, L'Hopital's rule, uh, 28n plus 12 over 6n. Again, let's say we don't know. L'Hopital's rule really, again, limit as n approaches infinity. 28 over 6, which is 14 divided by 3. This is the absolute exact area under the graph of x squared plus 1 um, between 0 and 2, and I need a sip of water. Any questions? How close were we with a midpoint with 4? I'm just curious. You're going to determine in Calc 2 um, the error in determining integrals. So um, how far we were? 14 divided by 3. Uh, minus 4.625, not too far. We were at 0 0.042, roughly, difference. But still, it was not the exact area. This is the absolute exact area under the graph. And if you ask me, are we going to have to do this uh, for everything? No. Uh, no, no. Uh, we can apply Riemann, Riemann sum only for linear, quadratic, cubic. How come? Because these are the only formulas we have. If you ask me to calculate the limit of the Riemann sum for um, tangent x, I'll say sorry. My apologies, can't. So we can only apply the limit of the Riemann sum to cubic functions, quadratic functions, linear functions. And this is also linear, it's a constant. So any other function, if you say calculate uh, the limit of the Riemann sum for f of x equals the square of x plus 1 between... Um, 
uh, two and three, I'll say sorry. I can. I don't have a formula for this summation notation for the square root. That's all we know. That's all we can use. Linear function, quadratic, cubic. Very limited. And of course, we're going to get to a much easier technique to work with, which is called integral. And I'm going to just say one thing about it, and then a, we don't even have, we don't have to see it, say it, but it's the same thing. So the limit, as n approaches infinity from the sum, from i equals 1 to n, from delta x, which is the width of the interval, times f of xi, because this depends on where it is. This does not depend on where interval, which interval are we looking at, but this one does. So this will be the same. This is the summation, the uh, um, Latin s, regular s that we use. We don't use this when we write. We use this, right? So, But it's an elongated s from, in this case, from a to b, which in our case was 0 to 2, from what? Exactly this, f of x dx. So this is the definite, we're going to calculate this, not this. This only for linear quadratic and cubic just to practice, but we're going to use this. So the definite integral between a and b. But this is not for today. So the rest of the chapter will deal with that. So I think we should um, uh, look at the limit of the Riemann sum for another linear, quadratic, or cubic. And then we'll stop. So please choose a function for which we should determine um, the exact area. Now, if you want um, a difficult situation, you will s not start at zero. That will be more difficult. And I'll show you why. But if you want to be nice and not take um, a, a lot of time, then you'll just start zero and whatever. But if you, you can, let's say you start from 2 to 5, and that's going to be more difficult. Especially if you use a cubic function, because then we have to cube. We're going to have to cube something like this. Um, for xi, let's say, whatever that is. So it's going to be 2 plus, um, let's say, 3i over n. And when you square that, uh, it's OK. But when you start cubing it, uh, it's not going to be that easy. Just, I would say cumbersome, long, but not super difficult. So let's choose another function. Let's choose an interval that you prefer. And at least let's get it started. Obviously, it's not going to take as long as it took this one, right? I needed to explain each and every step. I needed to um, show what I'm doing for each and every step. It's not going to take this long. But as I said, we are restricted. The limit of the Riemann sum cannot be determined for anything else because we don't have tools. Anyone interested to pick a function? Pick a simple one, like a linear function, to see how this works. I think a simple one works great. Okay, so let's uh, let's use a linear function. And let's say two uh, x plus four. And let's use a uh, more difficult interval. Let's say like uh, between um, uh, two and six. So remember, we need three preps. The first prep is delta x, 6 minus 2 over n, so this is 4 over n. Well, but xi will not be 0 plus i delta x, will be 2 plus i delta x, which is 2 plus 
for i over n. But since the function is not a difficult function, it's just linear, I have 2 times 2 is 4 plus uh, 2 times 4 is 8i over n plus 4. I just plugged it in the function. I multiplied this by 2. And then uh, it's 8i over n plus 8. After the three preps, I'm ready to find the exact area. Limit as n approaches infinity from the summation notation from i equals 1 through n. First delta x, 4 over n, multiplied by f of xi. Of course, I'll put the constant in front. It doesn't depend on i. It's always the same. So 4 over n. Now I apply the summation to the first term plus the summation to the second term. It's because I'm trying to cut back on writing. Okay. So this is limit as n approaches infinity from 4 over n. Again, this is a quantity that it's constant, so it will go outside. And the sum of i, I know. n, n plus 1 divided by 2, plus the sum of 8, but 8 goes in front, and 1 is left. So this is 8, the sum of 1. Therefore, I have limit n approaches infinity from 4 over n. I will simplify. So 4n plus 4 plus 8n. limit, n approaches infinity, 4 over n, and this is 12n plus 4. Finally, so I have uh, 4 times uh, 12, 48n plus 16 divided by n. Again, you can say infinity over infinity. Yes, but when I differentiate, I get 48. Exact area. Under the graph, on the interval 2, 6.